This is my step-by-step -step guide to how to prepare for a real estate photography shoot. Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back being very presumptuous, I know. I hate people who say that, so I hate myself at this second. Right, um, what am I talking about this time? Well, I'm going to tell you how I prepare for a real estate photography shoot. In the last blog post and video, I told you how I took the photos. Now, I wanted to do that first, as logical as it would seem to go through the preparation first. So you had some thoughts that you could take away and get practicing on photos and building that portfolio, which I'm going to get on to in a future episode. So um, let's stick with the preparing for a shoot. Now, this is based on my many, many years of experience as a real estate photographer. Also as an architectural photographer and construction photographer, there are slight differences which I will explain in this short video, which will last no more than six minutes if I can contain myself, which I will try to do. So the five areas I'm going to cover in this video are these. My God, it sounds like I'm talking about it, doesn't it? Number one, agreeing the shot list, a copy of which I will take with me on the day of the shoot. Number two, I carefully select, prepare and clean and pack the gear that I will be using. Three, I ensure that the building is ready for me and access available. Four, external factors, everything outside of my control. And five, the hardest bit of all is preparing myself because I'm getting on a bit now. Right, who am I? I'm an architectural photographer. I'm a construction photographer. I'm a real estate photographer. I photograph buildings and I also photograph buildings in nice places. And that's it. I don't do weddings, portraits, christenings. Nothing wrong with any of those. I'm just not very good at them. So I stick to my one thing, which is that. Right, let's get on to it. So, first things first the shot list now the shot list is the list of shots that the client has to have and is paying me to provide it's a must so i need the list with me it's always a good thing to have the list with you um i used to have all the shots written down in a notebook and every time i took one i tick it off um that was some years ago i don't need to do that now thankfully but i do read the list before i well when i get there really um, and also at the end of the job to make sure I've got everything I need. Now, I might get photos which aren't on the shot list, but I will always, always, always get the ones on the shot list first. That's the most important thing. So, number two, I carefully select, prepare, clean and pack the gear. Now, on a real estate photography shoot, I will use my Canon 6D. Yes, a Canon 6D. Canon 17 to 40 millimeter f4L lens, probably at 17 millimeters. Manfrotto 190 go tripod. Manfrotto geared tripod head. Three-legged thing universal L bracket. Neva loop viewer, and a Lasterlite grey card. That's it. I won't use anything else at all. So, oh sorry, and tripod. Oh no, I mentioned the tripod, didn't I? <laughs> sorry. That's what I'll use, nothing else. There's a few other bits in my camera bag, such as spare batteries, spare memory cards, cases for memory cards, but not much more. Because I know that's all I need. So I have a Peak Design Everyday backpack, which I put the stuff into. When I get to the shoot, I take most of the stuff out, so I've got an empty bag on my back, I'm not burdened. I do have spares in the car, but I don't need them. The Canon 6D touch wood is very very reliable okay so ensure the building is ready for me and access is available now if you're working for a real estate agent they've probably prepared the property for you or me even in advance anyway because they they need the thing to look the part for viewings and they won't accept a, an untidy property because they only get a fee when they sell so when you're working for a real estate agent, not a problem. Never had a problem with that. The problem, or shall I say challenge and impact on your time, is if you're doing these photos for a private householder, which I do quite often. Because they're not thinking about it in the same way. They're in their own space. They're so used to it. They haven't thought about clearing off all the work surfaces, easy for me to say, and all that good stuff. So best thing to do is say to them listen guys here's a list of things i want you to do can you do them please 
there's all sorts in there, like making sure all the lights work and that the light bulbs in the same room are the same type. If it's winter, if it's a real fire, have it lit and roaring, not just a little flicker. Really makes for a nice homely photo. Just stuff like that that prepares it. Fresh bedding, nice and flat and not pressed, but just nice and flat. It, can, it makes such a difference. So you need to prep the building. External factors, well that's weather, traffic, all that stuff. Everything outside of my control. I need to know what's going on. What I normally do is get to a shoot an hour before I'm due to because once I'm there one or two things can happen. One, I can start early, which is good, so I get away early. Or number two, I can't start early, so I've got an hour sat in my car where I can do some work on my iPad uninterrupted. See, all these iPads and all that good stuff has, has changed the game, hasn't it? An hour sat in your car waiting used to be time wasted. Now it's a bo it's bonus time, actually. It's productive time. Number five, I prepare myself. Yep, yeah, just look at me. I need some preparation, don't I? I need to make sure I'm rested. I didn't drink too much the night before. I've got snacks. I've got water. All that stuff... I'm prepared myself, I've got the right clothing on for the conditions. So it can get really warm doing real estate photography. It can get very warm. Most of the time the windows aren't open, so you've got them closed and that doesn't help. So dress coolly because you're going to get warm. Right, that's it. I said six minutes. That's more than six minutes, but I won't apologise for that. Um, thank you for watching. Check out my blog, rickmacavoyphotography.com. The ever traffic increasing blog, I'm delighted to say. And also check out new episode today, the Photography Explained podcast, which is my audio offering, which will have its own YouTube channel when I have the time. Anyway, enough from me. Thank you for watching. I've been Rick McAvoy. Cheers from me, Rick. <laughs>